video is going to talk about the three Grace Nichols poems that I've asked you guys to read for this week. Um, so this would be uh, Epilogue, The Fat Black Woman Goes Shopping, and Wherever I Hang. Um, this starts on 2751, by the way. Grace Nichols is a spectacular poet. Um, so she is Afro-Caribbean. She was born in Guyana. Um, and then she moved to Britain um, in 1977. Um, Nichols is a... Uh, she's a great post-colonial poet um, and a great immigrant poet. Um, so the work that we have here, and actually the work throughout her collection, The Fat Black Woman's Poems, which is a fantastic collection, uh, is dealing with this sort of sense of being displaced, this sense of existing in a cultural space that's not her own, but then also this sort of sense of finding ways to exist in that space. So, let's talk about her three poems here. Epilogue is a very short poem, um, four lines long. I've crossed an ocean, I've lost my tongue, from the root of the old one a new one has sprung. And this is actually, as short as this poem is, this is a deceptively important post-colonial poem. Because if you, pers if you, if you read through the um, post-colonialism and multi-ethnic Britain reading list, one of the things that you'll see is that uh, post-colonial authors and immigrant authors are very, very concerned about language because one of the ways that you establish colonial dominance is by imposing your language. Um, so Nichols writes in English. She's an English, she's an Anglophone poet, an English language poet, but the language of her ancestors would have been uh, an African language, Yoruba, Igbo, uh, Swahili, whatever it was, depending on, on her sort of ethnic background. Um, and then, of course, Caribbean Creole languages draw from French, Spanish, African languages, American Indian languages, and English. So, this notion of, I've lost my tongue, and from the root of the old one, a new one has sprung. This is about having one's cultural identity replaced via language, or via linguistic imposition. So, English is imposed on uh, the British colonies, and this compromises identity. And this is a big theme. Um, this is a, for instance, we get this in Ngugi Watiango's Decolonizing the Mind. Uh, which is one that you'll read if you if you choose the post-colonialism reading list. Uh, we also get plays like Brian Friel's Translations, which is all about um, the English renaming places in Ireland to establish colonial control. Uh, then we've got the poem The Fat Black Woman Goes Shopping, um, and this is, again, we get this sense of not not fitting with this culture of longing for one's own place. Um, take, for instance, this stanza, uh, lines 12 through 14. Nothing soft and bright and billowing to flow like breezy sunlight when she walking. So this is about the poet persona not being able to find her own clothes, the kind of clothes that make her feel comfortable and make her feel like she is within her own cultural space. Um, but this is also, again, a poem about language, or a poem that is very subtly about language. Because um, we take, for instance, this first stanza, the first four lines here are proper English, and then in line five we get, and do weather so cold. D, D-E replaces the 
here, and this would be a creolization. But what's really fascinating about this first paragraph is that the setup, the first four lines of the stanza are proper English, and then we get, boom, this very, very subtle reminder that this is a Creole perspective, or this is a, an immigrant's perspective. Um, and then we get this, we get this sort of Creole dialect increasingly throughout the poem, uh, line 11, Lord is aggravating, instead of Lord it is aggravating. Uh, and then a sort of direct reference to language here, uh, and I guess the third to last stanza starting at line 15, the flat the fat black woman curses in Swahili, Yoruba, and nation language under her breathing, all this journeying and journeying. And so there's this sort of sense of linguistic alienation, that it would somehow, that it's her natural inclination, her natural linguistic inclination is to use Swahili, which is an East African language, or Yoruba, which is one of the uh, the national languages of Nigeria, or nation language, which is the sort of creole of, of Afro-Caribbeans. Um, and then the last two stanzas here, uh, starting at line 18 and going through the end, the fat black woman could only conclude that when it come to fashion the choice is lean, nothing much beyond size 14. So what we're getting at the end of this poem, and what we get in Wherever I Hang, is this great use of sort of playful irony in, uh, in Nichols's poetry. And this is something that we see a lot in post-colonial authors, um, is the use of irony and the use of humor to, uh, to find comfort within within this sort of situation of displacement, within this sense of alienation and, and sort of not being accepted. Um, and part of that comes from the fact that post-colonialism is, as a, as a literary movement, is largely operating contemporaneously with post-modernism, which is doing similar kinds of, of ironic play. Um, and we get similar kinds of things in, similar kinds of themes and ideas in Wherever I Hang that we get in The Fat Black Woman Go Shopping and Epilogue. This sense of displacement, um, lines six and seven. So I pick up my new world self and come to this place called England. This sense of being out of place. And this sense of not sort of feeling welcome. This sense of not feeling... Uh, at home in Britain, even though um, even though she'd be a British uh, citizen, and then we get this sense at the, near the end of this poem that her identity, the poet persona's identity, is being reconfigured by living in Britain. So, line twenty: I begin to change my calypso ways. And then lines 24th and 25, now after all this time I get accustomed to the English life. This sense that there's a shift in the identity. It's no longer just a Caribbean identity displaced. It's what we would call a hybrid identity that's part Caribbean, but also influenced and restructured by Britishness, by English life. But then lines 26 through the end, but I still miss my back home side, or I still miss back home side, to tell you the truth, I don't really know where I belong. Yes, divided to the ocean, divided to the bone, wherever I hang me knickers, that's me home. So we get here at the end of this poem, this directed mission of self-division, this directed mission of not feeling at home in Britain, not being English, but also not not being purely Caribbean anymore. And so we get, again, this sort of ironic uh, 
this ironic end of the poem, this ironic twist here at the end. These, I mean, of course, uh, we have all these phrase, we have all these cliche sayings: "Home is where you hang your hat." "Home is where the heart is." Nichols, at the end of this poem, gives us, "Wherever I hang me knickers, that's my home." Wherever my underwear is, is is my home. Um, and so, what she does here is she sort of deconstructs these uh, these cliche notions of engagement with the home and and sort of uh, a personal connection to the home. It's not for immigrants. It's not for uh, post-colonial subjects. Um, it's not for displaced people about an emotional connection or a deeply rooted connection to a place. It's about just finding a space to exist.